Hello and welcome to the Southwest Creative Technology Podcast, a podcast all about exploring some of the exciting creative technology projects in the Southwest and beyond, and talking to the people who make them happen. I'm your host, Harrison Wilmot, new talent immersion fellow with the Southwest Creative Technology Network and tilt brush artist. In this episode, I spent the afternoon talking to Liam Bertels, Anthony Rowe, and the rest of their team and collaborators at Squid Soup. Together, they make up one of the teams to receive funding towards the production of an immersion-themed prototype from the Southwest Creative Technology Network. The various interviews are recorded happened at Squid Soup's Cotswolds-based shed full of lights, sounds, and secret projects. It's a little noisy and windy in some places, but I'll start off with a nice conversation inside the main shed, talking to Liam about their LED grid experience. Is that how you it is at the moment, it? isn't it? It, yeah. it, it? it is. It has become that in the last couple of years, I think. I think. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's kind of exploded. I mean, we're sort of doubling doubling the size of the volumes that we're making every year. And triple there this year. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah no, probably we triple tripled it this year. Oh, that, that... Not more, actually, we doubled it twice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we've gone. We've so quadrupled, it, in January we've quadrupled it this mm. year in terms of and. Yeah, so yeah. I, I think I think really I guess I guess it's what we're in the posi- what we're trying to do at the moment is work out the balance between developing new stuff and keeping the existing stuff going. Basically, I I my take on it is it that we are quite traditional artists in some way building mediums that we work in. So like an artist mixing paints or similar kind of stuff only our our stuff's electronics and and we are working we create new mediums to work in and then we create a series of works within that medium and those works expand and people recognize it and they say you know can you do me a work of this form based on your medium and at some point it becomes disinteresting to us or we take it into a slightly different place mm. and and I I think from my perspective the the audio wave which is what this is actually all about is uh, an attempt to create a new medium mm. again and it's really about the notion of as the the kind of the notion of a sonic pixel for me um it's not just about this kind of as it was described in the in the in the text as a as a kind of uh immersive audio system because an immersive audio system makes it sound like other existing technologies and it's an easy way to communicate it to people when they say look it's a standalone immersive audio system it's about it as much it's it's um as much about it being a volumetric audio Mm. experience that you walk into and all of the components moving and playing in and around you so yeah it's it's um and then the interest for me is going outside of traditional kind of areas of performance I guess that's what's important to me what's your kind of wildest dream what's the kind of the a super blue sky kind of thinking um, situation with we using this as a launch pad what can you see in the future with this kind of uh, new medium what with me as performer or with me as um, as, a, as a performer um, an artist from an artist's perspective? I think, for me personally, I, I quite often got an internal kind of rhythm moving in my head. Um, and I quite often, I like the idea of, of being a bit like, um, you know, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, where she comes in and all the birds follow and go tweet, 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 <laughs> and everything kind of moves in sound. Yeah. For me, it's a bit like a weird version of that. It's mm. uh, it sounds very odd as a concept, but the idea is that that the audio um, it's, so uh, follow you, you around, follow you, and but you can move it and you can kind of cast mm. sound into the space, and then as people come towards you, they are part of that audio dialogue. So it's kind of it's like all of those immersive things. It's about extending your experience mm. of the world augmenting your experience of the world but also that augmentation what i like about the mixed reality stuff and working out in the real world is that that augmentation becomes also a way of having a dialogue with other people in the space so it becomes a mediator between you and 
other people. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that sounds really cool. Yeah. The and first that, and thing that's popped into my head was like a wizard battle between two people. Yeah, which would be sounds, cool. Which, would be, would, so be, cool. which <laughs> would be really cool. And it's one of the things we thought about doing in the LED grid was just tracking the side so you can stand there and just throw lightning yeah. from you through the grid. But these are all, they're kind of all throwaway kind of ideas in a way. I mean, the other thing about this, about this, this sort of technology, um, and this is an earlier version of, of, of kind of where we are, is that um, it does, and I think this is really important to me, is it does change the nature of media. For me, one of the problems with media is it's imposed on you. Um, on, on a political level, uh, we need, and I mean political with a small p, not political with a large p, we need, a, we need, we need to work out how we move beyond the media forms that we've got that have produced this rather toxic media space that we inhabit. Um, so it's kind of and, oppressive. Yeah, and it's become an oppressive space. Cagey. Yeah, but it's also there's something about the rep there's something about repeatability and ownership that I don't quite understand how it works as a as a sh as a as media as a shape, and it's it's. I think I'm, I mean you you see now in the in the thing there's all these attempts at kind of regulation there's all these these ways of kind of modifying and moving media and what's. If media doesn't work as it is, why not just change the nature and form of, of the medium? Mm. Which is, and so the, these, these kind of standalone pixels, it's, it's, the idea is that the media merges, emerges from their behavior. And um, so the, rather than the, the, the content being imposed on them, the content emerges from collaborative behavior. And, and the comment I made earlier about them, about them it being a kind of extension of the self um, and about a, a kind of a mediating of the space between is that you kind of close that loop between you and that other thing which we which is media and I, I like that I like I just like the idea of getting out of the screen and into this kind of public space I, I you know I like the idea of of the sharing of stuff. The reason the LED grid is so effective is, I mean, it's a terrible low resolution experience on some level. And you'd mm. go like, it's like, you know, oh wow, 40,000 pixels. It's the corner of a screen. You know, it's not even your phone screen resolution. It's like one tiny little corner. Um, but it's a shared experience. Mm. And you get to look at other people and you get to kind of go, oh, we're sharing this experience. Yeah. And that, you people can't, do that with a screen in front of you. It's no, and it's not, and you're not, and the thing, you can't record somebody else in there with you, mm. if you know what I mean. Um, and that's really important. Just, yeah, um, to share the shared experience. Yeah, and I like the fact that it's not repeatable. What yeah. I really like about, what I really like about the, the four tech gigs is that actually being in the LED grid <laughs> is not an experience you can really record. Oh, no, you can record it as an object. None yes. of the photos make sense. You can, t right. you can t record it as an object, yeah. looks lovely, but nothing in terms of the imagery makes sense as a, from a personal perspective. Mm. That's bloody brilliant. That is really good. We have won with that one <laughs> because you, you have to go and see it. Is this an official question? Are you recording yeah, this? I am. <laughs> <laughs> to be perfectly honest, the hardest thing has been actually maintaining the discipline to actually focus on this project when there's so much other stuff going on at the same time. I mean, as you know, last week we were doing this thing with Four Tet and it was, yeah. you know, we just got a lot on at the moment. And But it's crucial not only that we you know, fulfill what we said we would do on this project, but also it's just crucial to who we are that we actually take advantage of these opportunities. You know, all this sort of urgent crap going on, just need to make sure this project gets the space it deserves. Mm. 
Uh, thinking about like the fellowship in general, how the fellowship? Now. Yeah, the fellowship okay. now. Okay. Was that um, last question referring to the fellowship? No. 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 Okay. I'm a, I'm a bit all over the place. <laughs> um, my mind's a little bit like Liam's. Uh, <laughs> Good luck with that one. <laughs> um, fellowship. Yeah. So the fellowship, like how how has that kind of time and space uh, helped or hindered? This, the kind of squid soup or the development of this project? They're unrelated. <coughs> unrelated? <coughs> yeah, oh, the okay. two projects are unrelated. The, the fellowship, I did, I did a piece that explores the optical properties, the light properties of aerogel, yeah. which is this sort of weird space age material, which is very cool when you project into it. Um, what kind of stuff did you... Because I, I remember you talking about that. But okay, well, so um, I've just that? created a, um, an artwork a P in fact, it's still not quite finished because I finished it, but then decided I wanted to completely change it all. So, so although I did that, um, we're now, as a studio, working on the project to get it finished. We're going to do a set of four of them, and they're each going to be in a box. And the, what's different is that they are... Um, there's a camera inside the box as well, so the, the, the system takes a picture of the aerogel and then maps, so it's real-time projection mapping back onto the aerogel. Whereas before I was just taking a picture manually beforehand yeah. and pre-rendering everything. So we're trying to do it in real time because um, if anyone jogs it, it's, it's knackered. Yeah. 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 Did your perception of like immersion and like the, the network change? Like your the, the network, like the group of people, like the cohort. Yeah. Change you your perception of, of immersion, or yeah. Well, I think it it sort of broadened it because there was. You know, a broad range of people on the fellowship, a lot of people from theatre and so on as well, which, I mean, I hadn't really considered it, it, theatre as immersion, but actually, I mean, it's right, anything is, can be immersive, and immersion's um, a broad term, and I think it was applied broadly. And, and I think it was great that there was not much, there was some, and that's fine, but there was not much VR-type stuff going on. Yeah, yeah. Um, My yes. perception Let these me days just double check. always test. immersed, and it's just like um, the transitions between different immersions, which are important. Well, yes, about. I mean, life is immersive, isn't yeah. it? Um, so, yes, exactly. <laughs> and I, but I, and, and in terms of the, my thinking on immersion, I think I sort of came to quite an interesting point also in terms of looking at how immersion is, because that project is very small. Mm. That aerogel is, is like expensive yeah so um it's just a tiny little block and i still i've got one piece which is like sort of 10 centimeters or so yeah um but i've got various small bits and actually the small bits are probably more interesting than the larger bit yeah really and so but and so i started changing my definition of definition of immersion as well because i think yeah squid soup we're known for these sort of big mm. walk through things where you are completely surrounded by light and sound and so on and i just so with this project, I wanted yeah, to see fine. if we could like explore, if I could explore a different kind of immersion where you're sort of drawn into something that's quite small and mm. subtle. I mean, you know, you get immersed in a book, you can get yeah. immersed in all kinds of things. So it is a broad, a broad idea. But I think it was, yeah, I think it was quite, it's quite interesting in that way. Going back to the prototype uh, phase of things, do you have any like, advice for like the next cohort coming in to kind of thinking about what kind of stuff they're going to be prototyping and do you have any advice for people generally who are possibly going through a similar creative prototyping thing? I think um, on the prototype side, I think, you know, it's SWCTN, there's, there's a bit of a balancing act going on between creativity and commercial viability. Yeah, and, totally. I, and, and the reason that I or we went with separate projects for the fellowship and the prototype phase yeah. is because the call was very different. And so I think if, you, if you're applying for a prototype phase thing, you need to be aware that they're looking for stuff that's got some sort of commercial potential. Mm. Cool. Um, yeah. I'll leave it there for now. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Thanks for that impromptu <laughs> little capturing of your <laughs> thoughts. That's a trombone. I do love a trombone play jazz. I do love a trombone. I do. I've got a, I've got a, a very old friend who grew up with who was, who was trombone player. Pardon? <laughs> Come on. Yeah, yeah. And he, well, he did play like that as well. He, he, he walked around doing this, and there you go. And that's, it was just, it was hilarious.
So from what I understand, Squid Soup's prototype idea was to create a light orb uh, or a, li a light pixel which housed uh, a speaker as well. So you could have walk through grid of light which also produced sounds. I was generally milling around the um, shed and the outside area uh, while the Squid Soup team were testing out the speakers. Here's some tinkering atmosphere followed by interviews with students Joe, Ben and Mike. And then we close off with some more comments from Liam. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just any of these. It's very. It's just a bullet connected thing. Because it's so much is on that breadboard. It's very temperamental, and yeah. I haven't soldered it together yet. But uh, all right. You just want to run a piece, another piece of cable. Well, we just take one of these if we can. Yeah. Or, or just take save one of you those. doing it. We could just run another piece of cable. Yeah. Just to. Just if there. Got a just unplug it. Is this the dead one then? Yeah, it says it's got no... Oh, really? It's got no light on this one. Well, it says on the top, doesn't it? Oh, that's There's oh, no... Yeah, it's got, it's got a circuit board. 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 There's nothing going Maybe it's, is it just really dim? No, it's not. I, I listened to it. I don't know. Hey. 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 It's a design consultancy called Design West, um, and I don't really know how they got the job, but we, me and Joe do product design, um, and we, our, our lecturer that like runs Design West, he came to us and um, we had to like interview for it. So there was other students that were, oh, yeah. wanted to get involved, um, but yeah, he, he chose us to do it. Why do you think they chose you? Um, I guess they sort of they went off of our, our past work as yeah, well. So he's yeah. seen he's worked with us throughout the year as well. So I guess they kind of know, you know how we work and that me and Ben work well together as a pair. Yeah. So you've been interested in this kind of um, kind of event mixed media design. Yeah, I, I guess so. It is it is very interesting. We've not really really done like a lot of it before, but yeah, this project is really learning, fun to good, get yeah. in, get involved in. What kind of um, challenge so far do you think so far um jay what's the big challenge big challenge <laughs> what have you struggled with um thought most hardest about yeah uh, it like we've mostly been it's sort of changed as we've gone on hasn't yeah it? yeah just like so we've had so many different designs and different ideas. At the very start, ideas, we were like working completely almost on sound. Yeah. And oh, now yeah. we're sort of sound so integrating the light good. into it. So, so the sound was almost the priority of the project yeah. for us because the sound was so. Um, the first poor. difficulty yeah. was trying to get the like transducers that were originally being used in the orbs to actually perform well. Yeah. But they never really did perform that well. <laughs> um, so then we moved towards the speakers and tried different loads of different types of speaker and. Um, eventually came across the one that we've got got here um, but we're still changing the speakers and stuff and trying to find like the best ones to use and uh, we're looking forward looking like towards more waterproof ones and oh, yeah. and all sorts uh, can you explain what a transducer is Joe do you have a good explanation <laughs> <laughs> so a transducer works in a very similar way to how a, how a traditional speaker works, but it removes the speaker cone, so it's got a weight that it moves in the same way that a speaker would move, that would then move the surface it's mounted onto, so it turns the actual surface it's mounted to into the speaker rather than just the, um, rather than having a speaker cone that will vibrate. So it vibrates the Vib object yeah. in the air? Yeah. yeah, it will vibrate the object, which will then vibrate the air, rather mm. than just going straight yeah. turns yeah. the object it's attached to into a speaker basically cool. and like yeah. resonates the sound from it brilliant thanks nice. i've got been roped into the project through the university just like joe and ben oh okay the, is that uh, in the same design west thing uh yeah it's through that project <laughs> oh. yeah and i'm a music technology student and i've been 
advising about what types, just the design of the speakers, um, what kind of how to approach speaker design and what components to use and things like that. So um, we've built these prototype improvement speakers and I've just brought along a little rig so that we can play some sound through them and test what it might be like um, in the end result. Because, yeah, um, improving the speakers is one thing and improving the electronics inside that plays the audio files is another thing. So we've got this separate system here so that we can bypass the internal electronics and just listen to how the speakers sound in the best possible conditions. Mm. And then we know that that's a benchmark that we can reach once we improve the electronics inside. Because the sounds that they have currently are quite heavily compressed. Gotcha. Right. Because there's only limited storage space on each of the chips. Ah, oh, yes. So, so not the speakers weren't great, but also <coughs> the sound files were quite bad as well. So that's why we're like, neglect, we're sort of bypassing the sound file part of it by playing things through this little amp rig. So sound is not beamed to them. They're all they're all con all the sounds are contained inside. Um, in the actual, yeah, in the way the system is, has been designed currently and will be designed for the next foreseeable project, um, each bloom mm. has a chip in it that contains the sounds, a number of sounds. And then they have the Wi-Fi system. It just sends a trigger signal mm. that says, play sound yeah. 51 now or whatever, cool. something along those lines. I'm not the expert on that. You have to <laughs> double check yeah. with someone. Cool. Yeah. Uh, what was your name again? Mike. Mike. Oh, yeah. Of course. That's right. Beautiful electronics. How did you get the UE guys? They were part of, um, part of the original uh, project brief. Um, the, the, the labs uh, down at UE, who's in, <laughs> I've forgotten what they're called, but the. Is it? Yeah, I'm, really I'm really like tired. Labs, labs uh, what's the lab called at UE? West. And the one that we're with the Foundry. Foundry that's ah. the one. So Foundry Labs. Um, and so um, uh, they, they're just a contact. Um, yeah, and, they, and um, as part of that project, Ant arranged to talk to them, um, and then the project developed from there. They, they, as with uh, they come on board as academics really cool. yeah, yeah. Nice. so with their specific audio skills and then they brought in students to work on the projects um, and they will be Phil and Luke will be here Phil's a little fraught today just because we are trying to make decisions about what what is because basically we've got six weeks of the project left yeah and uh, we're halfway through the project and it is it's kind of we're in a slightly different position than perhaps other other projects as in that we're, we, we, we need to arrive at a point where we have a production-ready mm. prototype as close as we can get. What's been the hardest thing so far? <laughs> I, th I think I, I, uh, the hardest thing from my perspective is that uh, Squid Soup's a growing company, mm. uh, that we are artists and that we have a specific set of kind of aesthetic agendas. Um, I think that there were multiple projects running. Um, so we did Fortet last week in, yeah, no, no, I did. So we did Fortet uh, last week in London, which was a very large, um, one of our LED grid works. So, and then it's, it's kind of that, it's, it's kind of that there's two processes going on. One is the re, re design of the electronics is, and then the other is the redesign of the actual unit in terms of the sound. And so there's just multiple threads and, in order for one thing to be tied down, the other thing has to move, and then in order for the other thing to work. And so it's just, it's the balance between those two spaces. And people are, you know, complicated. <laughs> the, usual, the usual complications. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Cool. Cool. Thank you to the Squid Soup team for letting me mill around and record them for the afternoon. It was a real pleasure to see you guys work and figure things out, and it was great to hear all your thoughts on your work and your hopes and advice for the future. If you're producing anything creative with technology in the Southwest or beyond, I would like to share what you're doing. Let me know and together we can make a podcast all about it. You can contact me via email 
My address is harrywilmot at gmail.com. That's two L's, two T's. Thanks again for listening to the Southwest Creative Technology Podcast. If you enjoyed your listen and know someone who might also, please share it with them. The music you heard during the podcast were excerpts from Ending by Kumiku and I'm a Machine by Glass Lux, which are both available on freemusicarchive.org.